My name is Mike Messina and I'm a firefighter and a fire service instructor for Allen Hancock College Fire Academy. And I'd like to take just a few minutes of your time today, if I can, and talk to you about an old foe from the fire service. And that old foe is this pretty and harmless looking plant up here, poison oak. We'd like to share with you some facts and figures pertaining to this old foe of the fire service, some ways we can possibly prevent getting poison oak, and to better understand this plant. So if you'll follow me over here, we'll go ahead and share some of this information with you and hope you learn something. How many people does poison oak affect annually? Well, we have some statistics here to share with you. At least 110 million people in the United States annually are clinically sensitive to poison oak. The stats tell us that 23 million are so sensitive that they will require a doctor's care, and that's even after a brief exposure to the plant. So what's all this have to do with us as firefighters? Well, we have some statistics to share with you on that. In the enormous 1977 Marble Cone fire, they could not keep a full crew on the line due to poison oak. One third of the firefighters on the line at one time or the other had to leave due to poison oak. 10% of all the lost time for the U.S. Forest Service was attributed to contact with poison oak and reactions to it. This 10% of all lost time injuries was double that of abrasions and lacerations. So we think many times out there of the dramatic things taking us off the fire line. The poison oak is non-dramatic, but as you can see, very substantial. So where do we find poison oak at? Well, poison oak is found in all parts of the United States, with the exception of Hawaii, Alaska, and some parts of Nevada. We have poison oak, which is found in the west. We have poison ivy, which is found in most of the United States, but not here in the west. And we have poison sumac, which is relatively rare and found in the east. Poison oak is native to the United States and to Asia and to Central America. It is found nowhere else in the world. It's a small wonder that when the pioneers and settlers came to this country, there were many reports of a rash breaking out in these people when they went and transplanted this pretty red bush with berries on it. Okay, this plant grows in wooded areas, it grows in shady areas, it grows in sides of hills. It grows in places that we're going to encounter it because that's where we're fighting wildland fires at. So let's take a close-up look here at the plant so we can better identify it. Poison oak is best identified by its cluster of three leaves. These leaves look similar to an oak tree leaf, more than likely where it received its name, poison oak, but the poison oak plant is not an oak, nor is it an ivy. It's actually related to the cashew family and the lacquer tree of Asia. You can also note that during certain times of the year, the leaves, as they are now, begin to turn red. It's a very pretty color. Throughout the remainder part of the year, they are green. The plant also has berries, which we can still see some remaining here in this part of June. It also has a real thick stalk or stem to it. The plant can grow to be very tall. It can also grow in very thick clumps. So what exactly is in poison oak that causes all this discomfort and problems for us out there? Well, we're gonna study this just for a minute and find out what it is. The plant has in it a thick, clear, and a gummy oil that's called urushul. This is the active ingredient that causes all our problems out there in the field. The urushul is found in all parts of the plant, in the canals of the plant, all the way from the tips of the leaves down through the stalks and stems, all the way down to the roots. The oil is released in the plant whenever the surface of the plant is broken. 
Now you may think, well, I'll just walk softly and not break that plant. But that's not quite as easy as that. First of all, we have bugs that feed on the plants and break the surfaces all the time. It's very sensitive. So your chances of ever picking up a plant or brushing against it and not making contact with the active ingredient, urushal, is very, very remote. How exactly does this oil have all this havoc that it wrecks upon our bodies? Well, here's what happens. When the oil gets on the surface of your skin and works down just beneath the surface, it actually binds and piggybacks itself right into your skin cells. Now when that happens, a message gets sent up to your, your, your brain and tells it that there's a foreign body in the presence of your body. And your body releases what's called T lymphocytes, large white blood cells, or macrophages, and all these things take off. The army's called in and goes and attacks this foreign body. And it's your body's own overreaction to this oil that causes the sores and the oozing and the blistering that we get when we have a sensitivity to the uh, poison oak. And what happens is all those white blood cells and things begin to actually tear apart the, uh, the uh, skin or the tissue, and that gives you the sores and the oozing, which is all the white blood cells and things in there oozing out. So it's, the own, it's your body's own reaction that's causing all of this, due to this oil called urushal. Urushal is very reactive. They have found that just a pinhead amount of urushal can cause a reaction in 500 people. And it's long lasting. There's been some case histories of where we have found poison oak leaves that had been preserved for medical research over centuries. And when they were picked up again, hundreds of years later, people broke out in a reaction. So it's a very long lasting oil. The sensitivity that we have can change it seems to decrease sometimes as people get older. So I guess there is some benefits here, folks, to getting older. A person can get it who has never got it before. I'm sure you've heard many firefighters tell you that story. I've never had poison oak until the last fire. Then all of a sudden I got it. Well, that is a normal situation out there. Nobody quite knows why that happens. Interesting fact is that babies rarely get it. It seems that people don't become sensitized to it until they're around five to ten years of age. One thing that's always asked when we talk about poison oak and is very worthy of discussing is can it be airborne in smoke? And the answer is unfortunately for us firefighters, yes. The urushal is airborne in smoke when poison oak burns and it can cause us some very severe reactions. Let's take a look at them. We can have a head to toe reaction when we make contact with that smoke. We can also have a fever that results from this, this uh, contact. There's also been reports of severe lung infections due to breathing in the smoke with the urushal on it. And we've also had, on some occasions, death reported when the throat became a or or was swollen up and closed off the airway. 